In the previous video, we added a background and some props to our scene, and now it's time to add something really useful, not just eye candy, but we're going to actually add the player in this video. Now, for the a player that's controllable, we need a sprite, a way to control it, and a way to let it interact with the world. So let's uh, explore that step by step, and the first thing we're going to do is create a sprite. This is the graphic that we're going to be using. Uh, pre pretty big there. Uh, to see on the screen but let's go ahead and drag that into textures once it's in here let's make sure it says sprite and it does and so right up here in the hierarchy let's go ahead and create a sprite well we could create a sprite but I just want to mention something here uh, about game objects the other thing we can do is we can go into the game object to create other and sprite but we can also just create an empty game object and let's go ahead and name this player and you'd probably just go ahead and pick Sprite, but I want to I want to show you something if you're new to Unity. Uh, a, a Sprite is just a game object with a Sprite renderer component. So you see over here in the inspector, we've got this Add Component button. We can go down here to Rendering and choose Sprite Renderer. And now we have this Sprite Renderer component, which you recognize this from when we created the background and the platform sprites. So if we go up here to game object, create other, create sprite, we end up with, here's new sprite here, we end up with this transform thing up here and the sprite renderer down here, just like we have here when we started with an empty game object and added the components. So what's cool is that the all of these game objects, uh, basically they start with the same thing, this, this base game object and then by adding components you allow them to do different cool things. Alright so that's just a little side note here. Let's go ahead and finish making this sprite by dragging the player up into here and we're also going to make it a little bit smaller. He's a little too big for our screen so we're going to scale him at 0.2 and 0.2 for the X and Y and the Z will leave at 1. We're also going to uh, go ahead and zero out his uh, Z position and then we're going to throw him into the foreground layer here. So over here in the scene view we grab him, we can grab him and move him around here and he's all ready to go. Well he looks good anyway but we need to add some more components to him. So let's go back over here to the inspector and add component and we are going to add a box collider. So we're going to go down here to Physics 2D and go to Box Collider 2D. Once he has the box collider, and this basically is just showing uh, where things can collide against him, we actually need to modify this a little bit because as you can see right here, this uh, green area right here is is the box collider. Well that means if something hits right up in here, it's going to act as if it had actually hit the ship, which we don't want to do that. So we want to make the box collider smaller so it fits the ship a little bit better. And we can do that back over in the inspector if we want. We can change the size, the X and the Y, and then where it's centered on, on the actual sprite itself. But there's an easier way to do it. If you uh, select the object here in the scene window and then hold down the shift key, you'll see that these little green dots show up here and when those show up you can grab those little dots and you can drag uh, the hitbox Oops, we don't want to do that so you have to make sure you just grab the green thing and then we can put it wherever we want and uh, uh, the green thing is kind of hard to see uh, I'm hoping it, it shows up okay on the uh, on the video here, if it doesn't and you can't really see what I'm doing, uh, just try it, and uh, and you'll you'll see it on your own uh, on your own screen. So there we have a hitbox that uh, is a little bit closer to the actual body of the ship. Now in this case, it leaves the the ends of the fins free, which means that if a bullet comes and hits the end of the fin, it's not going to show as a hit. For me as a player, I wouldn't care if that was the case. So basically, right here we have just the body of the ship is actually the the kill zone and if you do want something that fits the uh, actual shape of the ship more closely back over here and add components you can see that there is uh, besides the box collider there's a circle collider and a circle collider would fit the body of that pretty well 
Uh, but there's also a polygon collider, so you could actually fit the exact shape of, of the ship by doing that. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and leave it with the box collider right now. Uh, but we also want to add one more component, and that is the rigid body 2D that's underneath Physics 2D. So we're going to go ahead and add that. And by doing that, it, it lets Unity know that we want Physics to be able to act upon this sprite. In fact, if we go right now, I'm going to save this first and run this. And you can see that the, the ship actually just falls off the screen. And that's because gravity is grabbing it and acting upon it. Now we don't actually want that to happen, so back over here in the inspector, under Rigid Body 2D, we're going to change gravity scale to zero. And the other thing we're going to do is check this fixed angle, because when something hits it, we don't want it to knock it off kilter. It might be a nice effect, maybe play around with that, but for this tutorial, we want to keep it uh, straight and level there. Now that we have the player the way we want, I'm going to drag it from the hierarchy down into prefabs. And now we have a player prefab that we can use whenever we want. So far we've done all of this and have not done any coding at all, which is kind of cool. But that's about the end. We're going to get into doing some scripting here. So select scripts in the project pane. And then right click and choose create. And we're going to either do JavaScript, C Sharp, or Boo. And for this tutorial we're going with C Sharp, although everything can be done. If you, if you like JavaScript better, you can use JavaScript however it works for best for you. Uh, if you're just following along here, go ahead and do C Sharp. And we're going to name this Player Script. Now you can see over here in the Inspector pane you can actually read it, but you can't edit in there. So you actually have to use a real editor. I have my editor already set up, so I can just double click Player Script. If this is the first time that you've done scripting, uh, the Pixel Nest guys suggest that you go up under the Assets menu and choose Sync Mono Develop Project. And this is actually going to launch Mono Develop and bring up uh, this script. And I'm going to pause here until that happens and then come back and we'll get into it from there. All right, here we go. I'm going to open this here and open scripts. And there is our player script. Double click that and it'll open it up here. And just a side note, there's some uh, good information on uh, scripting and messages, message functions that uh, are useful in scripting. So use the link that's right above this video to go to the matching a website page for this part of the tutorial and then do a search on default scripts uh, on that web page and you'll find the list. It, it talks about awake, start, update, fixed update, destroy, and a few other things. It's a, a good side trip that'll, uh, that'll pay off later for you. So here we go and we are not going to be using uh, start in here so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. We're only going to be using update but uh, above update I'm going to say public vector2 speed equals new vector2. Now if you're expecting a, a lesson on what all these are uh, you will be disappointed. Uh, I'm just going to run you through the code and you can either type it in as I'm typing it in or go to the website and copy and paste it in uh, which is faster but not nearly as good for learning. Also if you're wondering what all these things do you can uh, select something and then hit on the on the Mac it's command and the single quote mark on Windows it's probably alt and the single quote mark but it could be control and the single quote mark not a Windows guy sorry you can just try one or the other and it will actually uh, open up the unity documentation for that Let me flip this over here so that just took us right there just so you can kind of know what's going on okay we so we have a, a public variable called speed and now we need a couple uh, floats. One's going to be called input x. And we're going to set that to input dot get axis. And which axis do we want? We want uh, horizontal. And now we want another one of those that is almost exactly the same. I'm a big fan of copy and pasting. If you can save time. And this one's going to be vertical and it'll be input Y of course. Now you might be wondering about where do you get this get access horizontal and vertical and all that kind of stuff. Actually back in Unity and this little little rabbit trail here under the edit menu you can go to project settings input and then over here in the inspector there's horizontal and it shows that the buttons are the left and right buttons 
and there's vertical, and there are the down and the up buttons, also the S and the W, and the other one is A and D buttons. So that's the, you know, the regular key press things. And there's there's buttons set up for fire, uh, fire one, two, and three, jump, and so on like that. So basically here we're, we're getting the information on which button they are pressing. And now we need another, uh, we need a vector three variable called movement. So here you can see we're setting uh, movement, which has three parts to it. The first part is being set to whatever this is for the x value of that times input x, whatever the y value of that speed is, which we'll get to actually later, times input y, and then uh, this is one we don't care about because we only care about x and the y, we don't care about z. And now we have to do um, a little secret thing, but I'm not going to get into it. You can do the little thing where you can look it up in the API and see why this happens, but it's basically to smooth out the movement on the screen. And finally, we are going to actually, after all of that, we're going to move the sprite itself. And that's it. And because this is in the uh, update function, it's going to be called once per frame. So it'll actually be uh, the ship will be moved once per frame, and so it'll give us a very smooth animation. I'm going to go ahead and save this, uh, switch back over to Unity, and if we had uh, a syntax error or something like that, right down at the bottom of the screen here, it would show an error message, so we can go back in there and fix that. And I'm sure you'll see that happen at least once uh, or twice during the rest of this tutorial. Now that the script is done, we have to add it to the player, and we can do it a couple different ways. Uh, we could go in here and we could um, add a component and add it like that. Or we can just take the player script here, drag it and drop it on the player. And you can see over here in the inspector that adds it there uh, just as well. And remember in the script, we created this public variable called speed and we set it with the value of 50 and 50. If you look inside the player script here in the inspector, there is a variable called speed, which is set to 50 and 50. That's what's cool. You can set those public variables and they actually show up here in the inspector so they can actually, they can be set uh, at runtime and before runtime and you don't actually have to go back to the script and change things. That's really cool. So we have the player script attached to the player. Let's go ahead, let's save this and run it and see what happens when I move the, when I use the, whoa. That's fast. Use the arrow keys. Look at that. Woo -hoo. Okay, that's pretty cool. So we got a little guy zipping around. He's he's really fast. In fact, he's he's too fast, I think. Let's uh let's slow him down. Let's say 20 25 and 25. And give him a shot here. Oh, that's easy. Okay, easier to keep them on the screen. This might be the kind of thing where you'd have options for the player, too, if you want to be able to move them really fast or if you want really touchy controls or whatever. So play around with them and see how uh, it almost looks like a game. You know, not quite, but almost. So we're going to go ahead and add our flying octopus. And here he is in the assets. I'm going to drag him into textures. And we've done this several times now. We're going to make sure that he's a sprite. He is. And then we're going to add a sprite in the hierarchy and if you look over here in the uh, inspector you can see that it actually went ahead and added Poolpy as the sprite for that and so let's go ahead and uh, change the name of the sprite and we're going to uh, give him a zero for his z position right now he's a bit big so we're going to scale him to 0.4 and point four. And we're going to add a box collider. That's under Physics 2D. And the box collider is going to be a size of four and four. And we're also going to add a rigid body 2D. And the gravity scale on this one is zero. And we'll go ahead and check the fixed angle box. So that's it for Pool P. And we're going to make a prefab out of him. We're going to be using more and more of the flying octopus in our game. And now we need to move him, so we're going to create another script. And this one is going to be called Move Script. 
And we could call it like move enemy or something like that or enemy script, but we're going to actually be using this script for more than moving just the enemy. So to open this one, I'm going to just double click on the move script and it opens up here. And we are not going to be using uh, the start function here, so I'm going to get rid of that. And we're going to be using a lot of this same code here. So I'm going to copy this and paste it here. We need one called speed and we need one called direction. And speed we're going to set initially at 1010 and direction we're going to set it at zero or minus one and zero. So minus one is actually going to be to the left and the zero means don't move it uh, don't move it up or down, just keep it uh, keep it where it is, because this is the Y value here. And we can actually copy some more. We're not going to get the inputs, we don't need that. But we can copy these three here. And we'll just change this to direction.x and direction.y. And the last two lines of code are exactly the same. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Make sure you save this because if you don't save this, uh, it won't work inside of Unity. We're going to attach this script to Poolpy. And actually, let's move him also into the foreground. And let's see, let's move him over here a little bit more. And run this. Ooh, he moved across the screen. That's cool. Okay, and just for the fun of it, let's stick this guy in the way. Okay, so you can see they actually have they've got physics bodies that are interacting with each each other right now. But that's all they do because we don't have any anything for the collision defined yet. But we will get to that. Now we already created a, a pool pee prefab, but then we attached the script to it. And so you'll see over here in the inspector, there's an apply button. So if I hit apply, then whatever we change with pool pee will uh, be applied to the prefab. Now if we grab another pool pee and drag it into the scene and press play. We get both of them moving across the screen uh, the way that we want. All right, we've learned how to add a player. Uh, we control it by the keyboard. We've added an enemy, which knows how to move that way on the screen. And now we want to start destroying things because there's nothing better than blowing things up. Uh, so we're going to need some ammo, and that's coming up next.